last year, which was pretty good, if I may say so myself, <laughs> wasn't uh, recorded because we had a mess up there with the uh, buttons. Everybody was trying to help. So one person turned it on, the next person turned it on again, and the next person turned it on. Anyway, it ended up off. <laughs> so, uh, um, so with your um, permission, I just want to uh, review a little bit of what we said shouldn't be lost, and uh, more important, go into something very, very uh, deep and very, very beautiful. Um, but what we learned to the Nefesh HaChayim in Zion, in Perak to Zion, let's just go over it quickly. The nefesh adam, and we de- we define in Perak Tesvav at the end that nefesh pirusha ratzain. So whenever we use the word nefesh in this context, um, nefesh hachaim, we're talking about the ratzon. Ratzon, by the way, is a is a fascinating thing. My ratzon. What do I want to do? Where did that come from? What's the makar of Ratzon? Possibly one of the most important questions a person can ask themselves. Like, why do I have this Ratzon? That we have certain Ratzon, we have them, but why? But whatever my Ratzon is, that's my Nefesh. Um, and then I have the Nefesh, the Ruach, Neshama, which correspond to Maisa, Dibur, and Machshava. Maisa, Dibur, and Machshava meaning that the nefesh is the, uh, let's call it the lower part of my um, existential self. So the nefesh is maisa, and the ruach, as everybody knows, is the, my and then neshama is way out there. So there's nefesh, ruach, neshama, which corresponds to maisa, dibur, machshava. Machshava, dibur, maisa, neshama, nefesh. Right? That's the way that works. Um, but then it gets exciting. That it's much more exciting than that, because if you take a simple letter, aleph, bays, of the aleph bays, a simple letter, so that letter, it's... it's the, Understand that the Sefer HaYetzirah, at the, at the beginning of almost every Sefer Kabbalah, uh, the first chapter, which is about as far as I get, um, the first chapter, it talks about how the world was created with Oisios. Oisios, um, uh, the, the, the Pirur Shadover is that an Ois, a letter, is the very first physical manifestation of the spirituality of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, or to put it in the words that we're used to, um, yesh me'ayin, the process of yesh me'ayin, something coming from nothing, ex nihilo. That process begins with an ois. So uh, a letter doesn't yet have a sound. It certainly doesn't have a word, and it certainly doesn't have a sentence or a paragraph or a thought. It's not an essay, it's just a letter. But the letter is the very first articulation of Ruchnius turning into Gashmis. It's in that letter where it all begins. <laughs> That's where it all begins. And I want, I want to learn more about that today. So, Chol Teve Yesh Gimel Bechinois, if you look at a letter, there are three parts to it. Maisa, Dibur, Machshava, the same three parts. Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama. Maisa, Dibur, Machshava, Naran. Pay, pay good attention. Oisi Ois, Nekudais, Vitamin. So there's the letter itself, the font of the letter, which is the gashmias of it, the goof. That's the, that's the goof. Uh, unto itself, it has no meaning. It has no sound. It has no pronunciation. You need to have nekudos. Nekudos, already um, a messer, what the nekudos is. It could have been completely different. Uh, but that's, we know how to pronounce a word. So nekudos, give us a way to say that letter. Without the nekudos, or without, what do you say nekudos? I don't mean necessarily three dots and a, and a komatz and a patach. I do mean that, but 
What we're talking about is the, the, the way, the derech of pronunciation of the letter is what starts to give the letter some meaning. Otherwise, it's just a letter. It's, 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 it's not, it doesn't have any meaning yet. And then there's the tamim, which are also not written in the Sefer Torah. Um, trump, what we call the trump, the musical notes. And the tamim, interestingly, is connected. Let's get the chart clear if you it's Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Maisa, Dibur, Machshava, Oisiois, the font, Nekudois, Tamim, the musical notes. The, um, then the uh, Nefesh Achaim in the Haggah tells us, don't forget, on top of every letter, so it was the Tagin, because the Nefesh is divided into two. There's my, there's my uh, actual physical body, and then there's also Gashmius, my, my personality, my, uh, my, how I am, what I can do physically. Um, those are the tagim. And I pointed out, which I'd also like to go into a little bit more in the next few minutes, is that, and Chaim asked to explain this more, that, that Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva, from all the people in history, Truth is, from all the people in history I'd love to meet, it's Rabbi Kiva. I don't have to talk to him, just see him from far away. <laughs> uh, but Rabbi Kiva was, was Yoshe Vidorish, Tile Tilim Shal Halachas, I'll call Tag Vitag. Millions of Halachas, Tile Tilim, millions of Halachas, I'll call Tag Vitag, just darshaning the Tagim. Ad Kedekach, the Gibar says of Menachas, the Moshe Rabbeinu was Chol he, he he became sort of depressed over the fact that he didn't understand these tilay tilim shal halachas from every tag. Let, 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 let me just say something before I even explain it. I should say this at the end, but I want to say it now. That it doesn't mean that Gemara is learned wrong by everybody, in my opinion. It doesn't mean that Moshe Rabbeinu didn't know those halachas. He knew all the halachas. He heard it from Hashem. What it means is he didn't see it in the tag. Understand the right shot here. He saw what the chalishas hadas of Moshe Rabbeinu the Gemara describes the Menachas that he saw Rabbi Kiva being Darish Tilei Tilim Shalalachas. I'll call Tav Gitag. Eifat Taroed Zebatag. That's the question. Where do you see it in the Tag? Why did it take all the way till Rabbi Akiva to be able to see it in the Tag? Tag is a little crown, like a Yud has a little shot in his gets. Little, 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 little. Uh, it's not even the ice. It's the Tag. Halachas are those things which are not the, uh, halachas are not Kabbalah, halachas is what you have to do. You wash your hands like this, you get up like that, you daven like this, you, you put on tefillin like that. That's what halachas are. Very much in the world of goof and nefesh. So you raise that because Moshe Rabbeinu was above. Moshe Rabbeinu was above that. So the, the whole idea of Rabbi Kiva, which we'll talk about, was taking the Ter Shabal Peh, which was above, and bringing it down to earth, right into the Tag. So it's it's gavaldi. If we just go a little further in the in the um Oisios, hey Mechinois Maisa. Oisios we have to look at on our chart, which you don't have. <laughs> the Oisios are Bachinas Maisa. It's just a maisa. Somebody writes a letter. You could write a letter in the sand. It's, it doesn't have a meaning yet. It's a maisa. Gashmius. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a cle like something that you can, it's something that's there, but what is it? Inanimate. Hmm? Inanimate. Um, this is, this is a, an ice in the sense that if you don't turn it on, it's nothing. It's a piece of plastic. You turn it on, it can do all kinds of things, right? Um, it has to be nidlak. Look at a sefer Torah. There's no nekudos. There's no trap. There's no musical notes. There's not even any. Altogether, nefesh has two parts to it, the goof and the nefesh. 
שהוא בחילס בייסק ידוע, הנקודה היא בחילס רוח. שהנקודה בוי בבייסיס על ידי הדיבר של אדם שהוא בחילס רוח. allows you to pronounce it, enunciate. כמו שיקר חילס אדם על ידי בחילס הרוח שבוי. What makes us into an אדם? רוח. Breathing, speaking. Why movement? Because the oath is inanimate. It doesn't move. It's static. But that's just a characteristic. It's not the essence. When you blow something, it's already dynamic. Okay. It's part of it. It's part of it. But the, the main part of it is uh, breath. The main part of being able to speak is breath. If you're out of breath, you can't speak. Teitzei ruchai, yashu vlad basai. That's a base. Uh, a, a base, you know, with all the sophisticated ways today of figuring out if somebody's alive or dead, it's hard to figure out because uh, you could artificially keep somebody alive. So there's all kinds of definitions of brain death and his heart stopped and all kinds of things. But in halacha, the Shulchan Aruch says one very simple thing. You take a feather, you put it by his nose. If it's making, if it's making wind, he's alive. If it's not, he's not. It's, a, it's all about nefesh, because it's all about the ending of the process of ayipach ma'ap of nishmas chayim, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave him ruach b'balala, and as long as he can breathe, he's alive, and if he can't breathe, he's not alive. Simple, simple. person stops breathing, his body's still there, yeah? <laughs> He's still standing there, still sitting there. Is he alive? Is he dead? You try to give him artificial breathing. You can do oxygen, you can put in a respirator, you can do all kinds of things, but what, what, you're, what you're looking for is breath. Without that, without breath, you, so that's ruach. There's no way to get the ois out. And then he says, the music of the word, the music. That's machshava. So I gave a mashal. I think it's a good mashal. Mashal labad over daiba to, you know, if you want to find out if somebody knows how to learn gemara, um, you don't have to ask him a lot of questions. You just have to say, say the gemara. He doesn't even have to translate because if he has the niggin right, he knows what the Gemara is saying. <laughs> it's all barova. If he knows how to do that, unless he learned how to fake it. That's also <laughs> But if, if, if you know how to say, teku, or, or right, to yufta, derava, to yufta, like if you know the niggin, that means you understand it. So anybody who could, you can't possibly, you can't possibly understand, know the niggin without understanding it, and you can't understand it without the inflection. It's the same way if somebody's talking. If somebody's talking, um, there's havana to what you're saying. You understand, you're not just reading. This is a problem, by the way, like um, if you're a bit of a speaker and you're nervous, so you write it down and you read from a paper. What's, what's, it's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible for the, I mean, it's horrible to listen to, and it's horrible, but the only thing is you don't say the wrong thing. People like that are nervous, like the President of the United States, they need to read. <laughs> but the problem is the inflection is always wrong. They, they, if, you, if you watch it, the question becomes an answer, the answer becomes a question, the, it's a, the high becomes low. I was reading the speech from this uh, rabbi, it was a conservative rabbi, so uh, I he had notes of inflection on the speech between the lines. So on it, it said, weak points scream here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> weak notes scream. Um, Okay, so that's what the Nefesh HaChaim says, but the, the, the Gewaldig is that, the Gewald here is that, um, that the Tamim, the notes, the music of the, of the Torah, which is not written there at all, is the Neshama of the Torah. Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, that's the Neshama of the Torah. The Neshama is the deep Havana. That's what the music, the, the, the Rabchal says, in the Kalach, the Rabchal says that Malachim can only sing because it's only neshama, there's no nefesh, there's no ruach, they can't talk. Whenever you say, it says, vayadabra ha-malach, don't be fooled, singing. Malachim are singing. That's all, that's all they can do. And, and they can only sing, by the way, in harmony. Karazel zel v'yabar. Karazel zel v'yabar. They can only sing with somebody else. See, it's a beautiful thing about neshama, just while I'm here, that, uh, you know, I might have mentioned this before, that, like, if I'm talking, or you're talking, and 
somebody else is talking at the same time. So um, it's disturbing, you know, because if I'm talking, you're talking at the same time. So like it's confusing everybody, and uh, you can't talk while somebody else is talking. If if um, if three people are talking at the same time, so it becomes a big bilbul. If a hundred people are talking at the same time, that sounds like a shoal. <laughs> Certain shoals, like a hundred people are talking at the same time. So like like nothing is like you can't you can't it's impossible to dab it. On the other hand. Look at look what happens when you're singing. When you're singing, one person singing. No, no. If two people are singing together, it's beautiful. It, even a bad voice. Fifty people are singing together, even if they don't have good voices, they're just making some kind of noise, you know. But fifty people are singing together, it's beautiful. You go to a concert, everybody's singing. You go to a shul, everybody's singing. It's out of steer. So why is it that when everybody's talking, it's terrible? It's just it's noise pollution. When everybody's singing, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. It's talking, they're not saying the same words. Even if they're saying the same words, it's not the same. Singing and singing doesn't have to be the same words. One's harmonizing, one's saying these words. It works out good because singing is the neshama. So when the chibur is on the the chibur is on the, on the on the level of neshama, not on the level of ruach, there's complete achdus. So that's why the kar of zel zeh, like kar of zel zeh kol alayla by the shira, they couldn't say shira the malachim. Like the gemara says, like kar of zel zeh kol alayla, malachim couldn't get close to each other to say shira because by shira you need. They couldn't say shira like karav zel zeh kol alayla. The the, the Chumash says because by shira you need v'kara zel zeh v'yamar kadosh kadosh kadosh. They said that your plan was the whole quick carry on two or three conversations. No, in writing, in writing by Reb Chaim Moser, he was he he was writing three no, things. It was talking to people and also beside him, beside him. telephones in his ear. Yeah. Reb Simcha Vosman told me he saw him do it. They had telephones. What? He had a telephone. I got. Yeah, he had two yeah. telephones. But it was Yadua, Reb Chaim Moser was multifunctioning. <laughs> it's it's Yadua that he was able to, to, to do that. Okay. So, but that doesn't mean that if he was taught, he wasn't, what he wasn't doing is saying two things at one time. <laughs> that he wasn't doing. I, I want to I share with you something. I want to talk a little bit quickly because we're limited in time. This is Nefesh Achai. Let's move over to the Hasid of the, the Kedushas Levi, or Levi Yitzhak Bardichi. Kedushas Levi. The Bardichi was the Talmud of the Magid, who was the Talmud of the Belshem. And uh, almost all of the uh, Bardichi <coughs> is based on what he learned from the Belshem. Uh, tremendous Labdin, by the way. The Bardichi like Levi Yitzhak Bardichi was a tremendous Labdin, like everybody should learn. There's nothing to do with what I was saying, but I just want to show you that he, he uh, left in his Tava. Levi Yitzchak, it's at the beginning of almost all of the uh, prints of Reb Levi Yitzchak. He writes, it's a quote, I just want to quote this for you while I'm here. Mi she'en boy mida toiva hazais lirois tamid rak toiva yasher be Yisrael. If somebody doesn't have this mida to be able to see good in other Jews, ve'en boy mida toiva akdoisha l'saper tamid b'shvacha Yisrael, and he's not able to say something nice about another Jew, but she Yisrael you mishubachum for him tamid beinav, but he doesn't always see the qualities of another Jew. But ain't boy amida toivak doja lamit schus v'sanigayra al Yisrael, and he's not able to be don people l'gaf schus. Azai yada namana, we can know clearly shla yiske kol yeme chayev lichnois bepesach shar avodas habayra. Will never be an avod Hashem if you don't have the ability to be able to say something good about another person and see something good about another person, you, you have no kasher, you can't even walk through the door, he says, of Avodah Hashem. You can't even walk through the door of Avodah Hashem. It's like... Um, Sorry, it's the first Nisarim of Suda and Tanya. Yeah, Arizal. Arizal. But I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning it because it says it here, but I'm mentioning it because it has to do with our Dibor. Yeah. And we're talking about Dibor. Dibor. So uh, let, me, let me show you what he says. The... Um, it, Kedushas Levi is on the uh, Parshas, then Lakutim, and then he has something called Kedushas. Kedushas. Um, and in the Kedushas Shnia, he says as follows. Bear with me while we, I wish I had a copy for everybody, but I don't. He talks about the Oiseus. Nimsa Tmunas Oiseus. Let's think about the Tmunas Oiseus, the, 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 the figure of the Oiseus. Tmuna, the, the look. David, you asked um, why the cloth? What's the cloth in all of this? This is what he's talking about. 
נמצא את תמונת האייסיוס היך שבתוי חגוף והגשמיוס, שם יש הארץ השכל בעולם יש הליינים, הוא קציר אלו האייסיוס והוא עמוק. That in, in, the, in the font of the letters, what we have there is a manifestation of how the Kedusha, which is unlimited, Ha'ara <coughs> El-Yoyna, which is unlimited, it's bleakful, can somehow, like a magnifying glass, be focused into a letter. Tzimtzum. You have how the highest, most esoteric um, bleakful is now coming down and it's showing itself in an ois, an aleph and a base. That's what it is. V'hu amak. Amnam ba'ilam ha'sel yainam when it comes to the higher worlds, ba'ilam ha'malachim, the world of malachim, ain't sham shum t'muna shal gashim. There's nothing gashmi is to put it into. U'tmuna sa'isi yash shal ksav shaluma sa'ilam. What about gayim? They write too. What about them? Sha'ilam ha'seichel mislabish b'sari yom ha'sha'lehem. Ve'inam seichel ha'yoshir k'moshulan. It's not the same thing. They're taking their seichel and they're putting it into writing. But when you see the ICFs of the Torah, you're taking Hashem seichel kivyachel and you're putting it into writing. And then he says, he brings here, and it's something that I was. Vihine. Um, just before we get to the Hine. Listen to the sentence here. Very, very important sentence. There is, you open up a sefer, there's Tmunas Oisius. You see Oisius. So, yes, Tmunas Oisius, there's the visual aspect of the Oisius, which are written in a book or in a sefer Torah. The yesh, but there's also Lashain Hamedaber Mashakas of a sefer. So, what happens? When something is written in a sefer, and now I start to read it, Vatar, Bilova, Telet, Liakov, Bain. So I've taken the, says the, says the uh, Kedushas Levi, there's a difference between sight reading, I'm seeing the Oiseus, and saying the Oiseus. What we're learning in Nefesh Achayim, the difference between um, Misa and Dibur, or the difference between Nefesh and Ruach. Utmunas Aisya Saksuva Sefer Hudmus Oilam Hasiya Oilam Ateva. What you're seeing here is Teva. I can make this with a pen, I can make it in a printer store. Shikane Yeshlam Gbul Utmuna. It's it's limited. But Lashid Hamadaber, however, once somebody reads it, they're saying it. Mashakasuba Sefer, they're saying out loud what it says in here. Hadibur Baats my hi ruchni is vain by gvul. I've taken something with a gvul and I made it beligvul. I've taken something limited, and now I've made it unlimited. Who neged oilam ha-seichel. That's what the seichel does when you read something. So he brings here, I, I mentioned on uh, Sunday that libi uh, amarli, <laughs> that the difference, and I was saying my own svarab, and the reason I got excited is because um, I see here now inside something. Um, you have tari shabak sab, you have tari shabal peh. What's the difference? Something Tarr Shabal Peh. So that Tarr Shabak Sav, I could have decided to put it into ICS. Tarr Shabal Peh, Hashem decided this is not going to go into ICS. One is in the world of Misa, and one's in the world of Neshama Ruach. Machshava Dibur Maisa, Machshava Dibur Tarr Shabal Peh, Machshava Dibur Maisa Tarr Shabik Sab. So, right? So it means to say that Tarr Shabik Sab is, in a sense, limited. You can't get imaginative here and say the words differently. There's no two ways to pronounce it. There's only one way to pronounce it. There's a Ksiv and there's a Kri. We have a Kabbalah Mit Lamosh Misinai. Tarish uh, about Peh, every, every Talmud, every, every London, everybody in the Beis Medrash has a right to say a Svara because it's unlimited. Because the, the Ksav has a Maila and a Chasarn. 
the Mahila is that we've taken the highest thing, says the Kedusha Levi, and we've brought it down into this world of Asiya. But once it's, um, for lack of a better word, canonized, <laughs> once it's written, it's written. It can't be my on it. It is what it is. As long as it's Teresh about Peh, it's bleak vol. So I thought to myself, and I said it with trepidation, that probably that's why <coughs> Dvarim Shabal Peh, that for all of history of the Jewish people, you weren't allowed to write down Teresh about Peh. It comes, you weren't allowed to write down, this is about Peh. This is, don't, don't mix up two things, there's two concepts. This is Bli Gvul and this is Gvul. This is Neshama and Ruach, this is, this is Maisa. Uh, why are you mixing them up? Until Rabbi Yudha Nasi comes and says, okay, everybody's forgetting all the Torah, let's write it down. You can't. <laughs> I mean, Rabbi I mean, you can't make a change like that. <laughs> you know, what, can you imagine I'd make a change like that? <laughs> It'd be Pashka villain all over the world. What, what's he doing? <laughs> can you imagine such a thing? I mean, you know, like the whole, what, one thing we do, we're not allowed to write down Teresh Shabal Pet. Rabbi Yudha takes his Talmidim. The beginning of this started with Rabbi Akiva of Talmidim. Rabbi Akiva of Talmidim, which is very important for us, started to write down um, pieces that they heard to keep the Messiah. Rabbi Yudha Anasi redacted the Torah. We need a Mishnayis. Today, if you don't have a Mishnayis, not even from. But at the time, it must have been such a it must have been such a brave act on a deep level. What was he doing? Just this was just like a. Um, you know, uh, Chaval, they, they would have had videos in those days. He wouldn't have to write down the Torah because, because you just say it and it stays Torah Shabbat Peh. What, what do you have to write it down for? It was something much deeper than that, I believe. He was taking something bleak vul and he was giving it a gvul. There, just, like, just like the Tanakh was canonized by the Anshei Knesset Sagdolo many generations before. Sealed. Sealed. So now Mishnayis is going to be sealed. Because everybody, first of all, is going to come and say, I heard this way, I heard that way, I have a different Messiah, I have a, this Messiah, that Messiah. No, it's sealed. More important, the, the, the Torah Shebaal Peh went through 2,000 years of development, as the, as the, um, the Gemara explains in Avodah Zarah, and it came to the point of Oilam Asiyas, and now Rabbi Yudan Nasi puts it into Gashmias. So I was afraid to say that. I said it anyway, because, you know, we're all friends. He brings here on the bottom of the Kedush HaLevi, the Maral says this. Ayin gur arye, shmo yislam, adal chavzayin. Lama lay hutter lichtoiv teresh abal peh. Why can't they write down teresh abal peh? Because they say, ain't kites for seif for teresh abal peh. Because there's no kites for teresh abal peh. How do you write it down? You see, it's a soy svarim harbe, ain't kites. So my melech said, what are you writing down? Something svarim for, ain't kites. That's how he reads it. Like kasva atayra eladavr sheshaychel of ksiva, you can only write down what you're supposed to write down. That which has contractual limitations. Teresh about peh. The chol davr shenichtav. Once something is written down, some words in a maral, who meshuar umugbal. Once you write it down, you see everything. I just want to explain something here. Everything you take down a notch. I'm using down, not in terms of direction, but just you take it down, down a notch, you lose the notch before it. So for instance, um, if, if I'm very inspired by something, my neshama is inspired, I see a beautiful sunset, I hear a beautiful song. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go home to my wife and tell her about the beautiful sunset that I saw. Now, first of all, it's boring to hear about a sunset. <laughs> it's one thing to see a sunset. But there's nothing to hear, nothing, what are, you, what are you talking about? Unless I'm, uh, you know, like a poet, you know, what are we gonna say about the sunset? The, sun, oh, the sun was up, it went down. Like a, <laughs> what are you gonna say about it? You have to be there. Um, there's certain things you have to feel. But worse than that, worse than that, um, when, I, when Hashem gives me a matana of a regesh, so the Arizal says, don't right away say it. Because once you say it, you're taking it from the Bechina of Neshama to the Bechina of Ruach. And if you write it down, you're putting it into the world of Dibur, of the world of Maisa. So don't say it, keep it for yourself a little bit. 
You keep it for yourself. Your neshama is working with it. So you don't have to share every time you're inspired by something. You have to wait till it does its job on your neshama <coughs> before you bring it down. Because once you describe the sunset, you lost the sunset. In the words of Reb Chaim Brisker, nishtal sos mertrach, dafrin zog. Not everything you think you have to say. Mitzad sheni, mitzad sheni, and there's a tzad sheni for this. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you're thinking of our Torah, let's say, or it could be a theory in physics, lahavdil, and you're, and you're, you, you've got it, such a brilliant thought. It's all gewaldic. And then you go to say it over, this happens to me all the time, <laughs> and it doesn't hold water. Because when, when you're making this transition from the oilam of neshama to the oilam of dibur, the, the Nefesh HaChaim says in Shar Dalad, it's like, you know, when a shaykhid has a, has a sakin, you have to make sure there's no yeah. nicks. So he takes his fingernail and he rubs it against it with his eyes closed to see if he feels any nicks in the, in the, in the, in the blade. So the Rechaim Velozhin says, that's what the tongue does for a Dvar Torah, which is in your, it was in your machshava. As you say it, you, <laughs> so even if nobody else feels the nick, you, you feel it. This is not what I thought it was. Um, and sometimes you have to stop in the middle. So th there's, there's a, a chasarn of dibur, but there's also a mila of dibur, that it, it brings it into the world of Gashmi, and it has to hold water. It has to hold water. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just imaginary. So, Torah Shabbat Rabbi Yudha Nasi comes along and says, let's write this down. This wasn't a, a, like a, an exercise because of forgetfulness only. What he's saying, we're now going to take a paradigm shift. We're going to make a paradigm shift to go from Torah Shabbat which is also going to become a Torah Shabbat Sav. You see, uh, it's, um, you know, even after Rebbe wrote everything down and, and the Gemara was written down, Ravina Ravashi wrote everything down, it became a Kubal, like the one thing wasn't written down so much was Kabbalah. And even when it was written down, it was written down in such a, a confusing Lushan that it was very hard to understand. You needed a Rebbe to teach you Kabbalah. And he had to hear it from his Rebbe. There's no such thing as, uh, as, uh, as reading it, just reading it like you're reading everything else. Why did they write in such confusing ways? Not because they were uh, bad writers. They wrote in such confusing ways because they didn't want to lose the regesh of understanding it from the place of neshama. They wanted to give it over to the Talmidim in a way that they're not putting it into the Bechina of Dibor. Today, everything's written down. Open, you go, open here look, Kedusha Slevi, like whatever you don't understand, it's explained. It's in English. It's in French. Uh, so is the Zayar, so is the Shar Kavanis of the Arizal. Um, Ravaria Kaplan spilled the beans, so, which is good, because, there, there, because he saw an uh, um, art scroll, you know, like a, a time for a paradigm shift where it's getting more focused, more Magushan. By the way, as everything becomes more in the world of Gashmias, what you have is Malchus. And once you have Malchus, once you have Malchus, you have Mashiach. So, like, all of these things are sad in a way that it's all getting written down, it's all very explicit on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's, 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 um, it, it took something infinite, made it finite, and like he says here, and I'm only getting, I'm gonna stop now because I'm only getting to a, a drop of what I wanted to say, but um, let me just begin the second drop. Rabbi Hudan Nasi, what is the gvil, as David asks. In other words, Nefesh Haim talks mm -hmm. about the letter, the Nekudos, the song. What's the parchment? It's not the, it's not the body, because the Tagim are the, the Nefesh is the body, and the Tagim are the, 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 the um, enlivenment of the body. So, so what's, the, what's, what's the parchment? So let me let me um just before let me just introduce something to you before we get to the uh get to the Kedusha Levi on Sunday but the um in the Torah it says in, in the Zeis HaBaracha very end Moshe Rabbeinu said Vayoymar and he said Moshe 
This is what Moshe Rabbeinu said. Hashem, Misinai Ba. Hashem came from Har Sinai. Zarach Meseir Lamoy Haifia Mehar Paran Vasim Rivois Kodesh. First he toured the world, asked them if they wanted the Torah, as everybody knows, and he came to Sinai. Miminoi Eish Dos Lamoy. Eish Dos. What's an Eish Dos? Eish Dos Lamoy. He gave us the Torah as the fire. Eish Dos Lamoy. The fire of his thinking he gave to us. What, what words? Eish Dos Lamoy. Rashi says, Eshtas. Why does Moshe Rabbeinu call it Eshtas? Sounds like the name of a shul. It's a very deep word. Eshtas. Shahisak suva me'az lefanov. The Torah was written in Hashem's world from before the world was created. Be'esh shchira al gabe esh levana. It was written black fire. I don't know what black fire is, but black fire on top of white fire. Says Rashi, Nosan lahem beluchais, ksav yad yeminoi, miyeminoi eshdas lamai. So, eshdas meaning the Torah was written black on white fire, black fire on what white fire? It's wild. <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu saw this fire, black fire, on white fire. Says Rashi. It's a Chiddush and Rashi. I'll show you why it's a Chiddush Rashi. That Hashem took that writing in the Shamayim, wherever it was. Me'oz always was that way. And he engraved it into the Luchas. Took the Ruchai, the, the Ruchnias, took the Heish, the, the bleak wool, and he put it into stone, carved in stone. Charus ala Luchas. And the Torah says about the Luchais, Saluchais, Maisa Lakim Hema, Va Michta, Michta Velakim This was all holy, everything about it, but it was stone, Sof Kosov, it was stone. Eish Das Lamai. Here's, let's leave you with this. The Makar for this Rashi is Yerushalmi. Yerushalmi says in Shkalim, Parak Vav and Shkalim. Uh, listen carefully to the nuance. Rabbi Pinchas b'shem Reish Lakish Amar. Rabbi Pinchas Amara heard this from Reish Lakish. It's interesting because usually it's Reish Lakish heard from someone. But Rabbi Pinchas heard this from Reish Lakish. She says, Taira, wasn't the, wasn't the word, this is the Makar. Taira shenasa na Kaddish Baruch Moshe. The Taira which Hashem gave to Moshe Nisana loy be'esh levana harusa be'esh shechira. He gave it to him, black on white fire. Not it was there, me'oz, as Rashi says, but that's not, that's not what Chazal say. It, it, he gave him, here Moshe, have some fire. It wasn't that way before. It doesn't say about before. It's just, Tairish and Nasan HaKadosh Baruch HaLemayishin, Nisana loy, how did he give it to him? Be'esh levana, harusha be'esh shechira. Listen to what the Pirish says here. Zemedubar, this is talking about, what is it talking about? So he says, Zemedubar, the Torah Moshe asher lamad berakiyah. Let's talk about the Torah that Moshe Rabbeinu learned on Har Sinai. Not the oil mayad, not anywhere else. Har Sinai, lamad berakiyah. Misefer Torah Hashem. He was learning from the Torah Hashem. The heptic me menu Torah say no. Moshe Rabbeinu copied it down. The Torah Hashem was a little bit black on white fire. Yeah, okay. a little bit different. That was before. Yeah. Bef- no, who is saying <laughs> that Moshe Rabbeinu is on Har Sinai? He sees let's uh, see what we can understand. He sees a Sefer Torah, which is black on white fire. He learns from it, and he says here the heptic me menu Torah say no. And from there he wrote down. <laughs> Our Torah, based on that black and white thing. 
brings us from the carbonate down the your shell. What did he write down? I don't know. <laughs> what did he write down? Where did he write down? Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu didn't come down the, the, the mountain with a Sefer Torah in his hand. Is that he saw Torah Torah somewhere? He didn't know. The, the first Sefer Torah was only 40 years later. Bar was Moya. He didn't come down with the We came down with the Luchos and he broke them. So Rashi takes the, the Yerushalmi and Shkola, but he twisters it around from what the Mepharshim say and what is the simple shot. And he says, okay, must be talking about the Luchos. And it's not, it's that Hashem, when he put his words into the Luchos, he put them in with an Eish, Shkhoi Rogav, Eish Levon, Rashi, I'm going by Munach, I'm not one to argue with Rashi. I'm just saying um, that, that that's not what the Gemara says. <laughs> The Gemara says Rashi was muchrach to say a pshat because it doesn't make sense any other way. That's what Rashi is learning, teaching us pshat. What did he come down with? Where did he write? First of all, he didn't come down with the Sefer Torah. Second of all, he didn't write the Luchos. Aluchos ma'isa lekim heimav, amichtav michtav lekim. He didn't write the Luchos. He just got the Luchos. He received the Luchos. He didn't, he didn't write the Luchos. The second Luchos, different story. Let's talk about the first Luchos. The second Luchos is so lechosh ne Luchos avonim kirishonim. You write it down. Okay, that's a different story. But the, but the first luchos. So what 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 is this what is this talking about? What is it? Oh. So let me leave you with this cliffhanger. So you have to come back on Sunday. <laughs> What was the Eish Shechira? What was the Eish Levana? How does it correspond to the Oisius and the Torah that the, both the Nefesh Achayim and the Bar are telling us that what we're talking about is a, uh, a transformation of Ruchnius turning into Gashmius Bligvul turning into Gvul? Um, Starting with Aish, what happened over here? I just read you the, uh, the on the right side the Kaisev. The Kaisev in the Ein Yaakov means the one who actually wrote the Ein Yaakov. Rabbi Yaakov Ibn Chabib, it's a huge Talmud Chacham, the Rav of Yerushalayim. He writes here. This is just read you these three words: Yadati Shelo Yadati. <laughs> yadati Shelo Yadati. <laughs> Sometimes you got to know what you don't know. <laughs> so. He says, I don't know. That's his, that's his comment here. I don't know. But we're going to know because um, we're going to have a main because I think that four pages later, Rav Levi Yitzchak explains it to us, this Gemara, in a way which is you can't budge from his, his svara, and we'll understand the Nefesh Haim accordingly. That was his